Another question we asked was, why is your faith important to you? I think my faith is very important to me and it's become increasingly important as life has progressed. One tends to be obsessed with all the things one can do in the absence of church, perhaps in the early years. But throughout my whole school time, from the age of nine until I was 18, I went to church twice every Sunday to the school chapel. My faith is very important to me. Um, I try to think that it's God walking alongside me, um, living in me and loving in me. And that's basically what I feel. Well, I've had so many different changes. I can't say careers in life, but this is probably the most settled and the, one of the best parts. The last 30 odd years living up here in North Northumberland, on the coast in my beloved Beadnell. Um, love it dearly. And of course now that journey which really led me to the particular house on the beach and back to Russ's home area and to my faith which has grown stronger over the years and now my life in ministry, in reader ministry, which is like a lay form of ministry but very much able to work with older people, privilege of taking funerals. This is now makes sense of the why why we've ended up, as it were, back in Russ's home area, in what is a spiritual home, certainly for both of us, and where I feel most settled. I can't bear to be away from. My faith means a lot to me. It helps, it's helped me through many bad times. Throughout my life, I've, I've always tried to behave in a Christian way. Um, associated with medicine in particular, where it's, it's, it's needed quite often. My faith gives me a pattern, a structure. Jesus Christ gives an example to follow and people mean a great deal to me. I'm no good at socialising. I never have been. I'm not a per party person. I don't even enjoy sort of, you know, ordinary social events particularly. But relating to people mean a lot. And I like to think that that's my motivation. But I think the fullness of my Christianity has been in retirement. Sadly, really, in many ways. But um, throughout my retirement, I've been involved with this lovely village church, St. Ebers, and, and received tremendous joy and comfort from it. the reflection and just the quietness of everything. I visited churches and cathedrals all over the world, worshipped in quite a few, and I really do find that it's always a feeling of quietness, which I really enjoy. Because it gives me, it gives me strength when I think otherwise I wouldn't have strength. And because of that, I have co not the confidence, that's the wrong word, but I feel I can talk to other people more easily because I know Jesus walks with me all the way. And that's what it gives me, a presence that I didn't know was there. It was an emptiness I didn't know what I was looking for. And I could talk about this for hours, but I won't. It gives me something that is a rock and a core of living. It means an awful lot because I don't think I could have coped without faith this year. It's a very, very powerful thought and message to me. Uh, faith means 
family, joining in, being part of the big community? It is difficult because I'm not sure about it. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. But I think perhaps on the whole it is there and it's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's something you think about now and then. It's, is it important? I suppose it is, but it's a, faith is a, quite a selfish thing. It's what it means to me. It's not really that important. It's how it comes out in people, I think. A reading from St Luke's Gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrolment, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. Can you share with us a memory of Christmas? There's so many memories, and my sister and I had a wonderful time at Christmas. We weren't very old, I was maybe about 10, I think, when Mum had given me the year before a dolly shop full of little jars of sweeties and little tins of sherbet. And Mum said if I left the empty shop, on the hearth on Christmas Eve, it would be filled up again for Christmas morning. So when we were put to bed and said our prayers, Mum went downstairs. And when she got downstairs, she shouted up to us, It's gone! The fairies have taken it. Well, I don't know how I got to sleep that night, but on Christmas morning, it was there all stocked up with sweeties and sherbet. Going to midnight mass with my mum um, and doing all the preparations before we went there. We could never put the Christmas tree up till everything was done. And so that's a powerful memory for me. I love the Chris Dingles, what we had before we came here at Wakefield Cathedral and again hearing the children singing Silent Night and just that stillness, all just that moment of stillness looking at the crib, just wonderful. I was, it was my third Christmas and Santa had brought me a lovely little pink basket chair um, but it was a special one because when he sat on it it played Bram's lullaby and that morning, the minister from church called round to see us and wish us happy Christmas. And he saw my little chair and he was asking about it. And um, I enjoyed my morning very much with mum and dad and my sister. And then we went to church and we were sitting in the congregation. And the minister went up to do his sermon. And he said, this morning I was in somebody's house. And this little girl was given from Santa Claus a little basket chair. And he told the story of my basket chair. Didn't mention my name, but I remember sitting in church and just thinking, goodness, he's telling the whole village about my basket chair. And I was just so thrilled about it. I've never forgotten it. It was just a very special Christmas morning. The basket chair lasted um, for, for me, for my sister, for my brother, and then for my daughter and then for my three grandchildren. And it's only just given up the ghost now because the, um, the basket round the legs has just begun to go. Unfortunately, the, the little music box um, went earlier on because my cousin Pam overwound it and it never played Bram's Lullaby again. But the little chair went on for three generations. So. 
The first time we, we had our Christmas lunches here at St Paul's in the hostel, because it's a community event, but we used to use the hostel, and we were all ready to serve the lunch because the meals were going out and I got a great team of helpers, when suddenly there were 25 people sort of in the kitchen and around me, and I hadn't realised they were all turning up. And I thought, wow, and it was so much fun. Well. My memories of Christmas was, was when I was a little girl on Christmas morning when we got our stockings off the reel up above the fireplace and we got our orange and apple and a sixpence. We didn't get all the things they get nowadays, but we were happy what we got. Well, my favourite memory of Christmas is something that happened between the years when I was nine and twelve, because I am a South African and I was born in a hot country, and I've lived most of my life in countries which are hot and sunny. So on Christmas Day, my friends, um, my family, which consisted of my mom and dad, my sister and my grandmother and myself, we would all gather with our relations and friends and go to a place for a picnic. And the children all got a very small present with some sweets as a final gift. And then we all departed back home again. Christmas in South Africa would be really different. I remember as a child seeing pictures of people eating turkey on a beach. I have an extra special reason for loving Christmas because on Christmas Eve this year, um, 47 years ago, I had a Christmas Eve baby. So it's always been a magic time. And my wonderful daughter, Victoria, I think has forgiven me for getting the dates wrong. So every Christmas, she is flooded with presents. When I was a child, I can always remember our child, my childhood days. They were so happy and enjoyable. The lead up to Christmas was we were from a, I was from a big family, and the lead up to Christmas is, was lovely and enjoyable. Waiting my dad coming home every night and putting the tree up tonight, Dad. They put it up when he was ready, and uh, we just had because now it's Christmas all year round. But we only had one Christmas, and I think we enjoyed them so much. Fifty plus years ago, uh, I met somebody at a Christmas dance, and that somebody became my wife. Time spent um, working offshore. I've worked offshore for many years, and um, I, I've celebrated Christmas in the middle of the sea with my working colleagues, um, and some of the times during the Christmas period um, have been very memorable. My favourite memory of Christmas is Christmas Eve 1967. It was my first midnight Eucharist here and I was very excited about coming after I'd been confirmed. And um, the church was full and my father led the choir in with the professional cross as he did and we sang Hark the herald angels sing. The wind was howling outside. The lights kept going on and off. And I can't ever remember being as cold as I was that night. I think probably my favourite memory Christmas in Beadnell would be a child about four, maybe five year old. My grandparents' house down Harbour Road and receiving a colouring book with a green cover that always comes back in my memories, especially Christmas time, walking down the road there. It's something I think about, yeah. My favourite memory of Christmas is driving home from a midnight service and standing in the road in front of us were two roe deer and it was a frosty night and it was just like a Christmas card. Perhaps as a child, um, my grandfather lived in County Durham and my parents used to go and collect him, it's when we lived in Newcastle. 
and he'd come up for the day and he was known as Grandpa Curtsy because he was silly. And there was one particular Christmas when, I don't know whether you remember this, perhaps a, a, a silver threepenny bit or a sixpence would be put in the Christmas pudding. Well, one day I wasn't looking and suddenly there was half a crown. And Grandpa Curtsy had given me half a crown. And that is an abiding memory of Christmas. Most enjoyable Christmases were after I was married and we took over the sort of family responsibility of Christmas dinner. We invited the whole and wider family and there were years when um, with parents and uh, maiden aunts and so on, we reached 25 sitting at a Christmas table. I remember that well because I did the carving by the time I carved my own meal, everybody else had finished. But there were great occasions, and, and I think we all loved them. <laughs>